Hi all. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, welcome. welcome Jason. Good to see you here. Yeah, nice to be here. Let's wait a few minutes so we have people joining. So while we are waiting, if you can add your name to the uh, Google Doc participants place, that would be good. Can you see my screen now, the uh, Google Doc? Let's give another minute and then we can start slowly because first two topics in the agenda are the topics we discussed previous weeks or they are just reminders and updates. And by the time we reach to the new topics, hopefully more people will join us. I have a question actually, like the, to the people who know Zoom, like, is it currently being recorded or not? I see this red dot on cloud sign. I, Does do, it mean I do see a recording indicator uh, okay. flashing up, to, up at the top left. So I'm okay. assuming it's being recorded. Okay, good. Because we want to record these meetings, not just for our agenda, but also we will have the presentations from projects and users. It's good to have them uploaded YouTube so people can watch them offline. So let's start. Uh, the agenda is available on Google Doc, as you know, and the topics for today are, the first topic is the co-chairs for the SIG, followed by common vocabulary terminology, which we started working a few weeks ago, and then a new topic uh, we discussed during previous meeting to start the work on SIG goals and roadmap. And then the next topic would be the discussion around standardization of content-based step execution. And Jason is with us. He will introduce the topic to us. And we will have the Tecton presentation 
followed by discussion from Christy. And if you have any topics you would like to have discussed, please add it to the add me part so we touch those topics before we move to the presentation. And then we uh, use the rest of the meeting for the tech talk presentation and discussion. So uh, the first topic is the co-chairs. Uh, I think the topic came up during the very first meeting and the question was like, should we adopt code chair setup similar to other uh, CDF six and uh, common practice, the six have multiple co-chairs and the agreement was to have uh, multiple co-chairs. So we had a nomination period uh, which ended on 10th of February and we had two people nominated by others. One of them is Christy Wilson and the other one from uh, Vogue, uh, Vavel Watson. So Christy accepted the nomination, but uh, I haven't heard from Watson yet, even though I sent him an email explicitly pointing the nomination. So he didn't come back. I suppose we will have two co-chairs for the SIG because no one else also nominated himself or herself. So we go ahead with two co-chairs and congratulations Christy for being co-chair and welcome to the club. Thanks. Take note. So we can talk about how we are going to run uh, the meetings and also how we can help each other with the SIG offline. So we don't need to talk more about it here. And then we can uh, give updates about how we are going to work with the SIG in coming meetings. Uh, the next topic is uh, about uh, the vocabulary uh terminology work we start a few weeks ago and the link is in the uh, meeting minutes and the i think we have pretty uh extensive uh terminology vocabulary there but we lack reviews like yes we put some uh, information about the the tools and technologies used by many into the doc and we added the terms used by the tools and it, uh, and we also have some mapping for the terms across different tools. But since I don't know all these tools, I might have made mistakes or I might have missed some tools such as Argo, Emil pointed out. It is very important if we can, you know, review this document and finish the work with this so we can contribute this to the domain and others can come and take a look at the document and get some kind of idea what each term means in different tools and so on. So I urge everyone to go and review the document and uh, send comments. So we finish this work because it's been around about a month now, I think, at least a few weeks. And it will be better we move on with this at least we close this topic. So anyone wants to talk about this topic? Any comments? Hi, this is Tracy. Um, I think it's looking really good and I'd almost encourage us to to never sort of see it as a finished document, but maybe even just merge it in now and kind of keep encouraging people to sort of keep improving it and going back to it. I know I um, did plan to kind of do more of a review, so and I, I still plan to do that, but um, I think in, in the sense of kind of, you know, minimum viable page, it's, it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, that was actually what I was hoping as well, like we can merge this and we can send new PRs to update the document if we find a new tool or if someone comes and says, so our tool is not listed in this document, let's contribute to the document. So then, yeah, I will merge the PR after the meeting and then I can send another mail to mail list pointing to the document and ask people to come and send PRs to contribute more. Great. Yeah, and yeah. I'd be, um, I might look at writing up a, a blog post about it so we can kind of put it in context and share it. So if anybody wants to collaborate on that, um, please let me know. That would be good. Tracy, thanks a lot for bringing blog topic. The third topic is about starting to work on SIG goals and roadmap. 
So this topic was uh, brought up by, I think Tracy, you brought up this topic among others. And one of the ideas was to look at what uh, the MLOps SIG is doing and use that as an example. So based on that feedback, I created an issue on the SIG uh, interoperability repo. I just put what we discussed during previous meeting. And what we are looking right now is to start this work. So we are basically looking to have some contributors in this. And if anyone wants to start this work, just sign the PR and we start working on it together. Because it is important if, if we can identify our goals and what are we trying to and come up with some basic roadmap that could help us to uh, start working in a more structured way and target certain areas to work with. So I'm um, not asking anyone to sign up for this right now. Yeah. Do we have any, um, are there any like initial thoughts or has anyone written up any um, sort of like, I think, I think that something like this would be much easier to contribute to if there was kind of like a start, a place to start from. And I'm wondering like what people are viewing as what they would want um, this SIG to do in that like, I feel like there's like a couple different ways it could go. Like one way it could go is that like this SIG could be attempting to sort of like create standards that we would want um, projects in the CDF to follow. Um, but that, that would be like maybe the most extreme version. And then like another, on the other end, it could be that maybe this SIG's job is just keeping track of like terminology that's in the industry and like kind of providing a reference for that kind of thing and like sort of reporting on the state of interoperability. Um, I'm wondering what other folks think they would want to see from, from the SIG or maybe, the, maybe somebody has done this work already and has a, a starting point. I think, uh, Chrissy, when we had the very first meeting, uh, a whole bunch of folks sort of shared how they would see it. And it was like the things you mentioned and more. And I don't know about everybody else. I want to do all of them. So, which including, you know, just kind of promoting the ways different tools do interoperate and raising visibility and the need for this. Um, and I think that's why maybe kind of a roadmap is important because we're not going to get round to everything. So it's almost like how do we phase it so we can deal with low hanging fruit initially, build some momentum, get more people involved, and then kind of get to the point we can tackle some really big industry challenges. I think uh, I, I like what you just mentioned. It could be interesting to start with like, um, you were mentioning like kind of showing ways that maybe existing tools already interoperate would be like, cause you could kind of highlight that as sort of like a, a, a positive thing we want to see more of. And then also sort of, maybe making it clear. Like one thing that I'm thinking is that maybe for some folks, it's not even clear why this is important, but like highlighting some of the challenges yeah. around it. Um, maybe those could be some like initial goals. Just, but just from what you said, I mean, like not. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have a stab at um, maybe putting together um, kind of my initial thinking on the roadmap on kind of what are the different categories? What are the way we'd progress them? And that, that would be one, and I'll send that round. And just in the, in the kind of roadmap, like one of the things, um, I know they do in MLOps, which I wanna go slightly differently, so I'm gonna encourage us to do it in this group, is um, rather than kind of laying out years, you know, we're gonna do this in year one, year two, um, since we, you know, you can't necessarily predict the time scales, just take a more of a now, next, later approach where the things we're doing now, we have lots of granularity, we know the specifics, and then we can get people to work on them. And then the things for next and later, the further on you go, the more they're sort of big ideas, but um, we haven't, we wouldn't scope them till we sort of deal with the things in now. That sounds great. I'll have a stab at, um, yeah, creating a, a first version and see what people think. Yeah, thanks for uh, this, Tracy. Actually, the thing you mentioned there, the initial categories and the way to deal with them, even right now we have some ideas about what are the things people think when they start talking about interoperability. For example, when we proposed the uh, SIG first time, I think it was Tan uh, from Lumina Networks. F interoperability for him was having some kind of pipeline language so he can move the jobs or pipelines across different tools. 
in Ericsson's case, as they presented during uh, the previous meeting, it's different way of looking into interoperability. So we already have some, I think, three, four different use cases in interoperability area. And as you suggested, if we can somehow list those areas and maybe come up with some you know, focus areas or whatever it's called to call people to contribute those areas. If some people want to work on pipeline language, they can create a small task force or whatever we name it. And those people can start working with it, come up with some ideas so we can make those topics more visible. Anyone else want to talk about the roadmap and goals? As Tracy said, please keep an eye on uh, the repository and whenever you see a pull request there, please just jump in and provide your comments there so we get this started as well. So this is the roadmap topic. And the no next topic is actually related to the roadmap topic because what Jason brought up, the standardization of container-based step execution is yet another uh, interoperability topic, at least that's what I think personally, because when you look at GitHub or CircleCI or the Tecton, they all have some kind of steps or in CircleCI, it's called orbs and they uh, use steps to execute some commands. And when uh, Jason reached out about this, topic, I was like, this is great because I never thought of this as something we can work and start getting people realize this is an important thing. So I just stopped talking and pass the word to Jason and the document is available on the uh, agenda. Yeah, hi Jason. Hey, how's it going? Thanks everybody for having me here. Uh, maybe open up the introduction uh, document in another tab and we can just have that up while I'm talking. Yeah. Um, but the um, the basic idea here is that we've all got something that's like, um, I saw the terminology thing, so probably I'm stepping on all kinds of different terminology here, but like some kind of step executor where we've got a single task that needs to be done as part of a pipeline. Um, so this is probably smaller than what you might consider a job, but um, uh, what the way this is being implemented in orbs and in actions, and I understand there's something similar in Tecton, is that um, everyone is writing basically a container, a way to pass uh, parameters at runtime to that container, uh, and then get the output back in a known format that can then be handled by the CI CD system. Um, and then um, you can assemble these into different things. So like if you look at all of the individual actions or individual orbs, um, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, and then so here at GitLab, we were just about to, to build our own, another slightly different version, incompatible version of the same thing. Uh, and um, I thought it might be nice to bring here and see if there's any interest in maybe coming up with a, a simple standard that we could all uh, be compatible with. Um, and yeah, uh, I guess I will, I will pause there if there's any questions. Um, one thing that I'm curious about is, uh, I guess with Tecton, we've kind of gone back and forth around um, standardizing on the, I guess, what you're calling a step here, or sorry, what you're calling it, actually, wait, what is the name that we're using here? Containerized script, I guess, um, which seems to kind of map to a step. Wait, hold on. I'm going to look at the terminology doc so I can get this, get this straight. So I'm not, <laughs> what are all the terms? Okay, wait. So this is in the context of GitLab? Right. Um, so in GitLab, we have a script section, um, which contains like uh, individual lines that are run. Um, those can be bash scripts, so they could also be an invocation of a container to do something that's wrapped. Um, so okay. this is that wrapping, uh, wrapping some kind of set of commands or functionality inside of a container that can then be essentially called from the command line. Okay, cool. And, th and this is, is this a job in GitLab terminology? No, uh, a, GitLab, a job in GitLab is the entire, um, a pipeline is made up of, of jobs. Okay. Um, I think the term, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to rat hole on this. What is a stage then? I'm just looking at the terminology in our vocabulary doc. Yeah. So stage might be something like you have build, the build stage where everything is built and the deploy, the test stage and then the deploy stage. Okay. So, uh, so a GitLab pipeline has stages and then stages have jobs? Um, yes. <laughs> okay. And then, and then jobs can further break down into what you're talking about here. Yeah, exactly. A job is essentially in the end is a series of, of steps. Okay. Okay. Um, so in, so I feel like the, maybe the mismatch this in this table, it's not quite 
lining up correctly then, but uh, we have kind of a, we have a similar distinction in Tecton between um, steps and tasks. And we've had a request to potentially, so a step in Tecton is like um, one invocation of a container. Um, and then a task is like several, several of those steps or several of those containers that run um, in order. And we have also had a request to standardize on steps, but I think it's something that like, I would like to understand better because I feel like, I feel like being able to combine multiple containers together is more useful than like one container with arguments. I don't know, uh, because you, you could have, because I feel like when you want to do something, I feel like you often need more than, you, you do need more than one container sometimes. Um, I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I, I, I guess that is what I'm trying trying to say is that um, so a single job can be made up of, of multiple of these in a row. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the, but there does need to be some way to you know pass the parameters to whatever is inside of that container and then get back the output of whatever happened inside of the container. Uh, I see. So, are you interested more in standardizing on like the the interface for the job itself or for the individual um, how you invoke the individual uh, like containers inside the job? Invoking the individual containers inside of the job. Okay, that's. Uh, I think in in Tecton we decided uh, for better or worse, and I don't think we're like a hundred percent happy with this decision. But at the moment, we use um, the Kubernetes container spec is like the way that we express that, which has it has some benefits in that it has things like environment variables and like uh, like uh, arguments, um, but then it has like weird Kubernetes specific stuff in there as well. Um, for better or worse, like, well, I mean, it could be okay, but like volume mounts are in there. Um, right, exactly. Yeah. And so, it, yeah, this is exactly what, uh, what I'm talking about. We're on the same page. <laughs> uh, and I do think it might be, it might be nice, you know, it, well, it would really be nice if, for example, you could run any, um, any action that anybody wrote, uh, or that there would be a common ecosystem of developers producing these little snippets or whatever you want to call them, containers that can do, you know, simple single things that can then be wired together and um, they were they interoperated with each other and there was not like well if you use actions then you can use actions but you can't use any orbs you can't use anything like if there was just one way that they all worked then everybody could benefit from uh, from the way that these were implemented i think the one thing that's hard for me to totally wrap my head around is just what the difference would be between like because i feel like the underlying thing inside of one of these is the image and like the image will it'll invoke a binary that takes some arguments and like it, it and expects some environment variables and maybe expect some files. But then like that, that feels to me like it's part of the image interface itself. So then I guess I don't, it's not hundred percent clear to me what the benefit is of standardizing on the thing that like invokes that image. Um, but if, but I, I would like to understand it because people have requested it and if we should do it, then I would like to, I'd like to do it. Um, I think I, I chime in here. more the um, that the images would be standardized, and that you could use the images from, you could use the same images across any CI CD system that supported this common standard. Oh, okay. Um, can I chime in here? Um, it it seems like we really are just um, uh, groping around uh, terminology here. Uh, standardization, I I feel, uh, standardizing around having uh, a shell script type of interface to an image is pretty darn standard. And I, I frankly, I wouldn't want us to uh, make it any more complex than that. So what, what is it on the, I, I guess I'll go back to um, the, the, the standardizing, you know, standardizing containerized script execution document what is it that we can't do right now with with what's being done in Tecton that this uh, proposes to solve? So are you able to run uh, an action from the Git, GitHub Actions Marketplace directly on Tecton? Or an ORB or both? I'm not using either of those products, so I don't know. But what I do know is that uh, the Tecton, the Tecton CD, one of its uh, goals has been to standardize the, the, standardize the language of um, uh, running things in a pipeline, which is what uh, Christy just described. Um, you know, we, there, there are, um, there are st steps that are in a, um, 
uh, in a task, which then are in, in pipelines. And the when it gets down to actually the, the step itself, uh, the mechanism of, of running that uh, script is the age old um, tried and true call, you know, have an image and you call its initial uh, script with just bash script or whatever it, that you put into the image. And that leaves the, the door open for anyone to, to create whatever that image, the capability of that image is able to do, you pass it in, in that string and it just does it. And I, I, I struggle to think that there's any more standardization required than that. Well, then maybe it's just adopting that and convincing the authors of, of GitHub and, and CircleCI to have theirs work the same way. But do you, do you understand what I'm saying with the, the how universal it is to have a image simply just what whatever your image is, the string you pass in as its command, that totally leaves it open. You can the possibilities are endless at that point, and that's what you really want with a uh, common uh, execution engine across various different uh, languages yeah, and stacks and what have you. That does make sense. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that that's the way orbs or actions work today. Well, I, I, I don't doubt that. <laughs> we, we have, I mean, at eBay, we have our own, uh, we, we actually put together our own uh, execution, uh, continu continuous delivery uh, execution engine. And yes, it does similar kinds of things to Tekton, but of course it doesn't, it's not standardized. Uh, and one, once we saw Tekton and how it's doing it, I can't imagine any, anything, at least I can't imagine anything else that is that is even more generalized. Sure, um, that, that makes sense. What, one thing that maybe might help here is that like, it seems like, like I don't actually know exactly what GitHub Actions look like or what the Circle CI orbs look like. So maybe like if we wanted to use this doc as a place to collaborate on this, it could be interesting to have like an example of a couple of those in there. And then we could like, compare that to an example of like what it looks like in like Tekton or some other system and then maybe just get a little bit more clarity on like um, if there is more that we want to standardize um, because we have actually had like even though this even though it is an image we have had people request that we that they w would want to be able to potentially swap out the pieces that are saying like this is an image and how you invoke it um, yeah I don't know it's it is like I feel like there's like levels of standardization where like the bottom one is going to be the image and then there's like kind of like things you can put on top of that, which pretend potentially is something that's right above the image. And then there's something that like puts multiple images together. And then there's something that puts like multiples of those together. Um, and you kind of like build more and more complex things from that. Uh, so Christy, we, I mean, uh, at, in Tekton, we definitely are missing the actions piece. So I've, I've, I haven't used GitHub actions, but I've read into them and uh, uh, this is something that and, uh, Andrea Fratelli st started with the the event mechanism, uh, his event mechanism proposal, and that's still ongoing, and that is something that's definitely needed. Um, is it? Uh, I, I may, maybe we can talk about it. I don't want to like. Um, yeah, I also don't want to rat hole on this. <laughs> <laughs> I am curious and hear, uh, to hear more about this, though, um, yeah. and to maybe see an example of like the GitHub actions in the Circle CI orbs as well. Yeah. Yeah, and at one level, to me, just some kind of standardization on how Tekton and these other tools take certain parameters uh, would, would be uh, seemingly small, but it's, it's actually pretty huge. The main benefit, I think, uh, is that just imagine like there's a lot of contributors to actions or orbs and if somebody writes a really nice action that uh, would benefit a ton of people and open sources it um, then you would have to have somebody today like translate it and make different versions for all of the different CI CD systems in order and all you would be doing is kind of wrapping it in syntax uh, changes so I think um, yeah th th that's essentially the, the, the core of what I thought might be a good idea here. So uh, I think one thing uh, many of you brought up is to look at what GitHub Actions and Circle CI Orbs are doing. And I actually tried to reach out to Circle CI uh, person. I think Tracy, you are in the mail as well. 
and we didn't get any response from him. And also we are looking uh, for someone from GitHub to invite them to this meeting and ask them how they are doing this similar things in GitHub Actions and Circle CI orbs. So if you know anyone from GitHub or Circle CI, just uh, get us in touch with that person and we can invite the person to this meeting and have further conversations on this topic because like what Tekton is doing and what Ramin uh, mentioned is kind of standard enough but since we don't know GitHub and Circle CI specific things it would still make sense to keep this topic in the agenda and have yet another conversation around this topic to see if we can do something about it at least documenting what these tools are doing again something good for users yeah uh, it is all publicly documented and, and open um so it wouldn't be too complicated to make just like a hello world container uh in each of them um so are you up to do that uh, can you give, update the document and give some examples so if we can't get anyone from circle ci or github we can just have another conversation within this group. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I just posted uh, in, in the chat uh, for our Zoom meeting here, the uh, Tecton Actions uh, proposal, uh, which Andrea, uh, Andrea Fratelli started. And if you see my, uh, he and I went back, back and forth on some comments. Um, it's exact, we, we are definitely missing this functionality in, in Tecton. Uh, and what I didn't want to do was to um, recreate the wheel. Uh, there's, a, I'd, I'd like to build on the lessons learned from previous systems who have tried this. And GitHub Actions is actually a very, very nice um, interface to look at. And if, if you know, the, one of the purposes of Tecton is to standardize uh, CI/CD across the board, across the industry. This is what I understand it, and um, Christy can correct me on this if that's not the case um I, I, as you will find out in a couple minutes i suppose <laughs> yes exactly uh, so having some, you know t taking a look at uh lessons learned of the past uh from previous systems who've done this and i've i've i mean i've i've written god in my in my <laughs> career i think four different uh, types of uh, notification and event uh, uh systems and this uh, github actions coalesces the ideas and concepts and the implementation of it quite nicely. And if we're going to standardize on something across the industry, we, to not look at that system is, would be a, a travesty. So that, that's why I put this in, in, and Andrea is still working on this. And I would welcome anyone to come in and uh, join us in this conversation and let's get this thing standardized because we definitely need it. Okay, so, uh, Ramin, by the way, that document is not public. I couldn't. Uh, oh, I I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you know, it might be that uh, only members of Tecton are able to get into uh, I'll leave that to Christy. How do we solve that? Yeah, it's usually uh, shared with the working group. Let me just see if I can make this one public or um, or if there's a if there is a mailing list for this um, group, I could just share it with that. That might be another um, solution to that problem. Yes, I, I'm I'm not part of that machinery, so Christy, you're <laughs> that's in your hands. Okay, I'll see what I can. Uh, do. If you can share it, SIG interoperability mail list that would work as well. I don't know if Google accepts that kind of sharing. I think that will work actually. Let me let me see if I can do that. Okay, so I edit. An action item on you, Christy, to sort this out. So, and then uh, another action on you, J Jason, if you can provide some basic examples for GitHub Actions and Circle CI Orbs. And perhaps uh, we can add Tecton example there as well. So, we at least have some of these things collected in this document you created. Sure. If someone could send me the links to the Tecton docs, I wasn't able to find them on Google search uh, for specifically how the container images work. I can I can add some links um, right to this doc here. Thank you. Great. So I think this was good. At least we understand Tecton has something here, and that seems to be 
something to look at and perhaps talk with others to see if that it makes sense to have some kind of standard there. So the I don't see any new topic added there. So before we start with the Tecton presentation, anyone has any new topic to bring up? Hi, this is Tracy. I'm just going to do a short announcement that if anybody is going to be at KubeCon Amsterdam, um, I know there's a few folks who will be there and we started throwing around the idea of getting together to discuss um, sort of like common metadata around deployments, like how do you define a deployment um, and how do you standardize that? So it's sort of very early days, but uh, like the folks who write Flagger and the Jenkins X folks um, were notionally going to find some time to get in a room and just thrash some things around. So if anyone else is around, please let me know and uh, I'll make sure I include you in the planning. Tracy, maybe you can send an email to uh, SIG mail list or the talk mail list or both of them to see yep. who is going there and who is interested. I will be there, but I know others. I think Christy will be there as well. So then we can schedule a time during KubeCon and find a room and talk about these things. It's, yeah, I'm interested. Idea. Yeah. And also, if you're going to be there, consider registering for the CD Summit, which is a day zero event um, before KubeCon starts. Uh, you have to go and if you've already registered, you have to go modify your registration and then you can add um, day zero events, but it would be great to see you there if you're interested. So is the agenda available a program, Christy? For I think it actually, I think it actually was sent out today. I might be able to add a link. Um, okay, that would be good. So yeah, KubeCon Amsterdam and CD Summit will happen as the zero event on March 23rd, I think, if I'm not mistaken, or 30th, something like that. So then we are done with this. And Christy, oh, I think I can stop sharing and then we can start sharing. Take down. Yep. Uh, sure. Okay, let me see how I do this. Um, not used to Zoom. This will take a second. This one, yes. Oh, wow. So I don't know if this is, I can't tell. Is this working? Can you see my screen? I can see it. Okay. We can see the presenter view, but we can't see. Oh, here we go. Now no, it looks perfect. Right? Okay. Um, all right. So these slides are kind of just thrown together. So uh, I may, my main purpose would be to try to give you an idea of what we're trying to do with Tecton and then kind of in the spirit of some of the discussion that we were already having today, um, show you some of the kind of places where we're attempting to have, uh, I guess, the terminology that Tecton is using and the groupings that Tecton is using um, and then uh, it'd be interesting to discuss with people what you think of what you think of those and maybe um, what some next steps could be. So, all right. So first of all, I am going to share with you Tecton's mission. So this is what Tecton is trying to do. So Tecton is trying to be the industry standard cloud native CI/CD platform components and ecosystem. Um, so, what platform components in that Tecton is trying to be building blocks that you use to build CI/CD systems. And then uh, ecosystem in that the idea is that we want to, if we can kind of, I guess, what this group is about to an extent, if we can standardize on some of these things, then we can easily build up an ecosystem of tools around them. Um, so you don't have to make something that interacts with this system and that system and that system. You can just make something that interacts with these building blocks and then it'll work with many systems, or at least that's, that's the vision. Um, and first, and you probably noticed that cloud native is in that definition. So um, I will define what cloud native means in this context. Uh, so on the left here is a very brief summary of the CNCF's definition of cloud native, which is microservices in containers, which are dynamically orchestrated to optimize resource utilization. And then on the right is what this kind of ends up looking like for a lot of folks. Um, so for a lot of people, cloud native um, means that the, the core building block of what you're making is images or containers, and that you're somehow um, orchestrating those containers and often the, the, the mechanism for that is Kubernetes, but it isn't always. Uh, in, in the case of Tecton, it is images and containers which are orchestrated with, they are orchestrated with Kubernetes, but 
it's interesting that the um, the API and, that we're trying to standardize on is the more important part and Kubernetes is kind of, we're trying to treat it more as an implementation detail. So theoretically, you could use the same API with something that's not Kubernetes underneath. Um, and also, this is referring to the, the CICD execution platform, not to, like you could be deploying to something that's not cloud native. Um, you could be building something that's like a, an iOS app or something like that. Um, but it's talking about the execution of the CICD system itself. And the, the next question that people usually ask is who this is for. I don't know whether it's who or whom, so I tried to go with both. Um, if you have heard this phrase, you might have heard this phrase before. I'm always surprised how many people have not heard it. I thought it was like a totally normal phrase, but apparently it's not. Um, but this is, I think this is an interesting way to look at Tecton, the idea of the porcelain versus the plumbing. Um, so if you look at like a toilet, uh, there's, there are different parts to it, but one part is kind of the user interface or like the porcelain part. And then underneath there's the plumbing that actually makes it work. Uh, if, you, if you just encountered the plumbing, um, you would not be able to use it. Uh, so you kind of, you need both of them, but let's see, wait, sorry, there's a comment. I miss, I can't, I can't see any comments. Doot, 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 doot. Oh, and now toilet analogies. Yes, uh, it's my uh, toilet, throwing some toilet humor in here. Um, but anyways, if you just encountered the plumbing, uh, you wouldn't actually be able to use it. You need both of them. So Tecton is trying to be the plumbing. It is not, it is not trying to be the porcelain which means that for many end users, Tecton would not be the thing that they would want to use. They probably do not want to construct their entire CI, they probably don't want to construct their entire CI CD system. They probably want to use something that somebody else has built. Um, so Tecton is trying to be, uh, trying to be the building blocks that someone else will build the porcelain on top of to create a great user experience. Um, but that being said, we do have kind of two sorts, two categories of people that we're targeting. Um, on, on the one side are people who are building CI CD systems, which we've kind of talked about already, and they would get a bunch of benefits from building on top of Tecton. But on the other side, and this is the more aspirational component that kind of has to do with um, why it's relevant to this, to this SIG, uh, we are trying to also make a catalog of reusable components that could be used with any uh, Tecton conformance system. So the idea would be that if you're building a CI CD system, you get a lot of value from just using these Tecton building blocks. And then additionally, if you make it so that our catalog of reusable components works with your system, then users get the benefit of being able to use this catalog. They can potentially um, build really complicated pipelines really easily. They could take those pipelines, move them to completely different systems. Um, they don't have to worry about lock-in and then they can get like a rich ecosystem of tools that work with them. Um, yeah, so those are the goals. And then I'm gonna go over very briefly what the, what the components are inside of Tecton. Um, and then I'll go through this fairly quickly and then I'll open up for questions and we can go back to any slides if things weren't clear. Um, so kind of like we were talking about already, uh, images are kind of an existing standard that everybody has kind of rallied around. Um, so they're at the very, they're the very most basic building block for Tecton. The next building block on top of that is something that we call a step. Um, which is actually almost one-to-one -one with a Kubernetes container spec. And this uh, adds things it's like environment variables and arguments, um, and then some other Kubernetes things that we don't want, but mostly this is just so you can explain how to invoke an image. Uh, on top of that, we have a concept called a task, which lets you combine steps together, and the steps are executed in the order that they're declared in. You can declare parameters that a task uh, wants. You can declare uh, files that the task expects, like it expects files to be written to some directory. We call that workspaces. And then you can express that the task will produce some kind of results, like for example, the digest of the image that it built if you're building and publishing an image. And then the next type that we add on top of that is a pipeline, which lets you put tasks together into a graph. Uh, you, can take, you can take inputs and outputs and pass them between the tasks in the form of if a task produces a result, you can pass that as a parameter to another task. Uh, you can also have, if a task um, is using a workspace, you can take that workspace and use it in another task. For example, if you wrote some files that need to be consumed by another task. And then we're adding in other things um, that people need, like being able to express conditions, like only execute this if it's running against master, or um, things to do on failure, like if this whole thing fails, you should, you should update the pull request, or you should send a message to Slack that kind of thing. 
Um, so this is probably, I'm guessing this is probably the part that's the most interesting to this group. So this part is just super fast. There's another related project called Tecton Triggers, which is all about event triggering. Um, I'm not going to describe what these components are unless somebody asks afterwards. Um, I'm just going to assume that we're more interested in those other components. But this, this is another potential place where we could have some sharing um, of components, but I think it's a bit less, we're le it's a bit less clear and this project is also much newer. Um, and then finally, I want to talk about the catalog, which is the, the place that we are hoping to basically have all these reusable components. Um, so this is just a very brief overview of the catalog. On the left is kind of a list of sort of all of the components that we might want to be sharing in the catalog. Interestingly, as we talked about before, steps are not on this list. We assumed that we'd want to share images, task definitions, and then it kind of gets fuzzier from there. Uh, it's not clear how useful it is to share entire pipelines, but maybe people would want to have out of the box pipelines that like do a like a lint test, um, push, deploy, or something like that. It's possible. Um, and then on the right are kind of our very rough plans around the catalog, which are to kind of try to take best practices from uh, Helm charts and have sort of like a sandbox level of catalog components and an official level. Uh, it's really important that all of the components that are in there be really well tested and they be really well documented. Um, one measure of being a Tecton conformant system would be supporting the items that are in the catalog. Uh, and, and a lot of this is aspirational. If you look at the catalog today, you will not see all of this. Um, so it's work that we need to do. But it's also very important that you be able to version these tasks so you can make changes to them without breaking people and that you be able to, that last part is probably too specific to Tecton to really get into. Um, but yeah, so that, that is everything that I had to present um, today. So um, does anybody have any questions or anything they'd like to know more about? I'll, I'll start, start by just saying thank you. That's a, a very nice informative presentation. I learned I learned a ton about Tecton there that I didn't know. Great. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, if you do have any more questions at any point, uh, oh, I should have mentioned, uh, oh, there's two other things I was going to show you actually um, in this context. Um, one was, uh, I mentioned that we have, do, 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 I mentioned steps, um, we, and I mentioned that there are Kubernetes container spec. There's actually one exception to that, which is that we added something called script mode that lets you basically define um, scripts as kind of like first class things. So you can have a step that just runs like a bash script um, it runs a Python script. And this, this is a place where I could see this being like a reusable thing if you wrote like a very large script in here. Of course, then the line between like, would you want to instead publish an image that has that script in it? It's kind of um, fuzzy. Um, and I also wanted to show you what a task looks like. And this is, this is not a real task. I tried to update this to have kind of all the features that I was talking about. But this is an example, sort of an example of a task that would run some um, tests against some Go source. So it would declare that it expects some files to exist in a particular path. Um, it de declares parameters that you can pass to it, um, like flags that you want to pass while you're running, running the tests. Um, and then you can have steps. This one only has one step. The step runs a Golang image. Um, it runs it in the directory where you put your source. And then it runs go test. Um, and then this is totally contrived because this thing doesn't actually have any results. But you can declare, you can declare values that you would actually produce afterwards. Um, which I don't know, number of tests run, maybe. I'm not sure if that's a great example here, but yeah. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about Tecton or engaging just with Tecton in general, um, we have a community repo where you can find um, information about how to like join our Slack or mailing list, join our working groups. Um, yeah, but you could probably see in this presentation that uh, the goals that we have around Tecton are kind of pretty similar to the goals of this working group. So um, like one thing, one thing that could be interesting to do, I think we were talking at the beginning of this meeting about how to create like kind of standard represent, representations of things like pipelines. It could be, we could potentially use like the Tecton definition as a starting point for conversation maybe, and then like talk about what's missing from there or what's not right. Um, I mean, and, and, or, or we could take it in another direction and be like, is, is the image the thing that we want to standardize around? Like, is that, is that enough um, to be our most basic building block? Uh, yeah, anyways, so those are my thoughts. So I'll stop, I'll stop sharing now. I have a question actually, because oh. I've been hearing like Jenkins X and Tecton, some collaboration going on between these two communities. I, and I don't know what kind of like 
collaboration going on like what is Jenkins X, X doing with Tecton and my source are can, can I take that one because I've yeah. been I've been dealing with uh, with the folks at Jenkins X uh, James Strachan uh, and uh, others um, so <clears throat> Jenkins X originally uh, uh, was a, it still is a, a, a complete CI/CD um, de definition and runtime system. They were, they originally um, based their CD orchestration on Jenkins pipelines, which has its own language, it has its own DSL, um, and later on. Um, I want I want to say late last year, they decided that um, Jen Jen Jenkins itself is just not serverless. It's not that they decided that; it's just that is the case, and um, they wanted to go with something that is uh, native to Kubernetes, <clears throat> a, a, a pipelining mechanism that's native to Kubernetes, and really the thing out there was Tecton. So Jenkins X, even as of last year, they have adapted Tecton CD as their pipeline mechanism. So now they have uh, that community uh, has uh, a DSL for defining a pipeline, which then they translate to a Tecton uh, pipeline specs. Okay, so we here at eBay actually. Uh, did a pretty intensive um, a POC with uh, Jenkins X. Uh, it's great. It has some good benefits. My, my biggest uh, worry and problem with it is that it's doing a translation between its DSL and Tecton CD. So we we decided, you know, uh, why why have this uh, mechanism? Why have this translation layer uh, even be there to begin with? We we will just deal with Tecton CD directly. In fact, as Tecton evolves and which it has been, it's in its initial stages. Um, guess what you have to do to that translation layer? You constantly have to update it as well, and you will never fully catch up. So um, we are standardizing at eBay uh, our, our CD mechanism around. Uh, Tecton CD, and if if any of the groups internally want to use Jenkins X, well, more power to them. They they can do that. But we we are providing support for Tecton CD itself uh, within the company, and that's what we're going to uh, standardize our uh, CD orchestration on. Hopefully, that answered your question. Um, yeah. One thing to add to that that's interesting, and uh, Tracy can correct me if I if I am wrong about this, but. Uh, we've actually been talking with the Jenkins X folks about exposing some of the Tecton types um, more directly. So like specifically being able to support the catalog uh, in Jenkins X. And it's something that we're, I think we're planning to like um, in the next few months actually like get together with some folks who work on Jenkins X and then like work on it together and like add support for the catalog to Jenkins X. I think this yeah. So, no, that yeah. sounds good. Yeah. I, li I like Jeremy's summary. Tecton is the plumbing, Jenkins X is the porcelain. And I think it's nice the way they work together and depending on your use case, you can come in at different levels. I know the Jenkins X use case is sort of looking at applications where you've just got, you know, dozens and dozens of microservices and you just want pipelines generated for you. you you're not going to be there kind of handcrafting things. Um, so yeah, it's they, they work very well together and people can come in and work at whichever level works best for their, their use case. Uh, so Tracy, I, I mentioned this to James uh, uh, and as well, that uh, having a, a, one of the best things that can happen to Jenkins X is if, if, if they would adapt the definition of the pipeline to uh, the Tecton CD specs and and stop doing any translations in between. You you, you will never catch up. So it, maybe you could make that point. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll pass on the message. Pass on the message. <laughs> <laughs> As somebody they're, they're all going to be in here next week, and it's. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> be good. No, that, that's great feedback. Yeah. 
Okay, maybe we should have Jenkins X folks also come in and presenting what they are doing and how it is going. Actually, Fatih, I, I would highly recommend that. I think that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Tracy or Jason. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. can make that happen. And we know like folks like Andrew uh, Bayer are working on, you know, Tecton and Jenkins X and his experience of Jenkins. So he's kind of this one person who knows the internals of all of those three tools really well. Okay, I am just adding that as an action to both Tracy and uh, Jeremy, so we can have them present it to the group. So, uh, Christy, if you can upload the slides to the SIG, uh, oh, sorry, CDF presentations repo, SIG interoperability folder, people sure. can take a look at them. I put an action on you for that. Thank you. And thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, we have five minutes left, left. We don't have to use that time if we don't have any other topic. Anyone wants to bring up anything? So uh, the next meeting will be on, uh, let me find that it will be on March 5th and we will have a presentation from a user during that meeting, uh, David Villasonio from Orange and they are uh, heavy users of GitLab pipelines and they've been doing pretty cool stuff because they are heavily involved in various open source communities such as ONAP Open Network Automation Platform and OPNFE Open Platform for Network Functions Virtualization, both are Linux Foundation networking projects and their presentation will be slightly different from talking about GitLab pipelines per se but it's more about how they uh, integrate their pipelines to ONAP uh, community because ONAP community uses uh, Gerrit and Jenkins and Orange uses GitLab and they fetch changes from ONAP Gerrit and test those changes on GitLab pipelines. I suggest you to join to that meeting and see what they are doing there because it's actually similar to how we are doing in Ericsson with different open source communities and it is very difficult for us as users to bring the open, open source technologies to our product development units because all these communities use different tools and yeah that is one of the things about this uh, seek to find ways to improve the situation so march 5th that presentation will take place and then i will send the minutes of the meeting tomorrow and uh, send the new agenda for upcoming meeting so as usual please add, add any topic you want to discuss to the agenda directly and looking forward to see you in two weeks Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks. thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Uh, hey, Fatih, are you still there? <laughs>